Hi everyone, I am Elvis and I hope you're having a fantastic day. So I wanted to do this short recording of this announcement that was made by Lamini. Um, if I'm getting that wrong, sorry. But they released this announcement here. It's more an announcement and they also have a paper for it. Um, and it really caught my attention. This is something that I've been really focused on for the last, I would say, couple of years. Uh, trying to figure out how to mitigate certain issues in LLMs that may range from, you know, factual inconsistencies to like reducing toxic generation of content, understanding like stereotypes and biases. And one of the more prevalent issues with LLMs today is hallucination. And that has to do with how these models are trained, right? They're obviously trained on massive amounts of web data. Because they have been trained on large amounts of data, it is my belief that these models, these large language models, they represent the world in a certain way. They have a view of the world. And for some of us, it may seem that these models are hallucinating, but it could be that that's exactly what these models are meant to do, right? There's a lot of debate around what is hallucination, the different types of hallucination and so on. So in this specific work, they're focusing mostly on getting facts right. So let's say you were to prompt a language model, could be a llama tree or a missile, or it could even be like open AI models as well. And you're prompting these models. And part of the prompt engineering work is going to be trying to figure out how to like mitigate any of the assumptions that this model is making. This model, again, has an assumption of the world, has an assumption of what could be an ideal output for you for any of the use cases that you're working on. And so it is your job as an AI engineer to develop really effective prompting techniques to be able to mitigate any assumptions the model is making and steer the model towards the type of outputs that you want. And so this work here is presenting an approach. It's a completely different approach from what you will do with prompt engineering efforts or even something like you know, a retrieval augmented generation, which has also been proven to be a good way to mitigate hallucination problems with these LLMs. And so we're going to go through this blog because I think it's really important topic. And hopefully towards the end, you have a better understanding of what's the state of things and how our companies and these AI startups and dealing with these issues, right? Especially because we are interested in putting these LLMs into production type of applications. And so here we go. So what they report off the bat here is they do have a 95% LLM accuracy and 10x fewer hallucinations. So anytime you go and try to modify the model knowledge, which is the case here, when you try to modify what the model understands, the way it understands that data, you're going to run into a lot of issues. There could be like catastrophic forgetting. There's a lot of papers that cover this phenomenon. When you're tuning a model, you have to be really careful about that. So this is something we want to find out whether this particular approach actually preserves, right? It must be able to preserve what the model already knows and its ability to produce high quality output. So they report 10x fewer hallucinations. So let's see what this is about. They claim that lamini memory tuning, which is their approach, led to 95% accuracy compared to 50% with other approaches, right? You can see that's a significant jump in accuracy. And hallucinations were reduced from 50% to 5%. So the accuracy is still very important, but also they are able to reduce hallucinations by a huge margin, right? Basically, the lamini memory tuning is what they consider a research breakthrough that overcomes a seeming paradox in the AI world, right? Achieving a precise factual accuracy while upholding the generalization capabilities that make LLMs available in the first place. This is what I was saying, right? These LLMs are very powerful. They can generate text. They're very useful already for a lot of use cases. So we want to be able to preserve that ability and not because we're mitigating hallucination, the model will forget certain things or not be able to produce high quality output. The method is specifically, they are tuning millions of expert adapters. They use LoRa as, as an example. Obviously you want more efficient way to do this since it's gonna be millions of adapters that they're gonna tune um, with precise facts on top of any open source LLM. 
could be a llama tree, could be a mishra tree. So they give an example here, which I really like. I think the idea here is that you want to tune these adapters, these expert adapters, right, to be able to learn facts and learn that in a reliable way, right? And so I think it borrows inspiration from information retrieval because they are using some type of index to retrieve that information or that relevant expert information at but, inference time. So not all the model weights are used. So this dramatically reduces latency and cost across the board. Uh, there is a paper towards the end if you want to go read all the details, but I will try to cover a few things that they claim here and give you my thoughts on why this work is important and what are other things that we may also want to keep in mind. The first experiment is always going to be, okay, use some prompt engineering technique or prompting and maybe paired with a retrieval augmented generation. This is about giving the model some relevant context and they claim that it's necessary, but not sufficient. So we're not throwing away what you can do with RAG because they're pretty good at what they do, right? The idea here is how can we kind of couple this with other ideas? And the idea that they present, I think for me, is very interesting and we'll get into the details in a bit. So one thing that really stood out for me is, so why doesn't RAG work, right? Why, why are they claiming that RAG, it could be problematic where we want factual consistency, uh, you want certain types of data, the model to remember that and know exactly how to pull that fact you know, when we need that. So the right context increases the probabilities of the right answer and nearby wrong options. So you're optimizing context and that's why RAG works, right? But the model doesn't know that a nearly right answer is still wrong. So this system here, this LNM, doesn't really fully understand when it doesn't know something. It doesn't know when it doesn't know, we like to say, right? So because that is the case, right, we're going to have issues of generalization. We're going to have issues with factual consistencies and so on. Uh, because general models don't distinguish between exactly right and nearly right, right? So it's going to make a guess, basically what's the best guess it can make about the factor information that it needs to pull to be able to answer whatever query or question a user is asking. Um, so they never really learn to take the loss on those answers to zero, right? So this, remember, this is a probabilistic system. The system doesn't really know that because it's not part of its learning objective. And so prompting and RAG won't change that again, because we are using, in most cases, we're using this static system. We're not really changing the weights, right? We're not tuning anything. Uh, what the model knows is what the model knows. And the other issue that comes to mind for me, because I've been developing RAG systems recently, is that uh, there's always going to be this kind of knowledge conflict between the language model and the information you're retrieving from your vector database, potentially. And so how do you deal with that? And that has led to a lot of hallucination problems in our cases where, you know, the model already has some kind of knowledge and is very confident about that knowledge or that fact. And then we also have this vector database that has its own facts. And then we kind of combine that, right? We put that in context and the model needs to decide, no, which one to choose, right? It's the same, I think, problem that they are trying to describe here. But this one is more about the inner workings of the language model and how it actually uh, generates those sequences of text. Here, they also say instruction fine tuning might be the wrong tool for the job. You can read that as well. Um, the statement that stood out here for me is that traditional fine tuning does not ensure that the model answers are faithful to facts in its training data. So we have to do something quite different here. And so now we go to what they're proposing, which is this lamini memory tuning. So they claim near perfect fact recall via 1 million way MOE. Remember, this is 1 million expert adapters that they're tuning, right? Leave. They might be using some model like Llama or something like that that's open source or a smaller version of that. And that's a good thing, right? Because we don't necessarily need to, you know, potentially use a bigger model. We can probably use a smaller model to achieve this. And then maybe potentially also combine this together with a bigger model where we do some kind of refinement process on outputs. But it's really important for a lot of knowledge intensive use cases, high stake applications that you get those facts correct, right? Because the model already has the ability to generate really good outputs, uh, readable outputs. And this wasn't the case, by the way, a few years ago before ChatGPT, these models really struggled to even put sentences together. So if we have come a really long way and it's really exciting to see these ideas being explored. I'm not saying that this is probably how it will go in the future, but 
I get excited when I see this type of results because I know how hard it is to actually mitigate hallucination for a lot of applications. More details in the paper as well. Uh, but again, as I mentioned to you, it's a mixture of memory exports on these open source LLMs, right? They're using the lower adapters here. Um, and at inference time, the model retrieves the most relevant exports at each layer and merges back into the base model to respond to the user query. So you can see here how the flow information happens. We have the open source LLM goes right here. We have this kind of routing that's happening, right, with the experts. And then we have the mixture of memory experts, and eventually we have this response to the user. Um, again, a lot more details in the paper itself. Um, but here, I'm going to read what's involved because I think this is probably one very important point. The result is a sparsely activated model called a a mixture of memory experts that can scale to an enormous number of parameters at a fixed computational inference cost. We know that these mixture of experts are great for when, when we want really fast inference, right? And this is what we have been leveraging. This is what all these companies are doing today from Mistral all the way to Google. And so this means that this particular approach have extremely high capacity for the number of facts that can be learned, bounded only by the total size of the training data set. So Lama Tree was trained on 15 trillion tokens. Realistically, you will run out of system memory before you run out of memory capacity in a mixture of memory experts. You say, ultimately, this approach makes what were impossible use cases that critically suffer from hallucinations within reach and drastically improves LLM time to accuracy and thus time to market. Again, the research paper is here. I think this approach makes a lot of sense for me. Um, again, it's about speed. It's about making sure we retain the model's ability right, to generate high quality outputs while eliminating or mitigating some of those issues like hallucination um, and other things like generating toxic content. And so, yeah, do explore this. I just wanted to do a quick video on this just to summarize some of the findings here. I think this is an interesting approach. It's very different from what we have been hearing uh, about RAG and prompting. But actually, there are a few papers that came out. And if you look at my Twitter, I'll leave a link in the description. I've actually featured a few papers over the last few weeks where researchers are trying to figure out what is the best way to make these models understand and know what they don't know. If they have that ability natively, I think we can avoid a lot of these problems. Probably not perfect, somewhere in between here of all these approaches, but I think it makes sense to explore this because I think hallucination might be something that's very core to the way language models work, but for a lot of use cases, it's actually pretty bad. Um, and so remembering facts, you know, allowing them all to confidently remember important and relevant facts, that's really key here. And that's what this approach is talking about. And so it's a different type of fine tuning, right? A fine tuning specifically to remember facts. And I think in some way it also contradicts how the community or the industry has been using fine tuning because the way we use fine tuning today is mostly like for refinement, maybe uh, try to get the right tone for something or get the right structure for outputs of an LLM. And these are the use cases that are mostly common, but this one was very new to me and I'm glad that they you know, shared a bit on and to make researchers want to try out like ideas like this and explore more bold uh, approaches for solving these issues that's very different from like RAG or something like prompt engineering. Well, thank you very much for listening in. Uh, like this video, it helps a lot and subscribe to the channel. That way I know that you're enjoying this type of content and I'll see you in the next one.